So there's two things I want to record today. There's a bit where it says um, in the chorus, sing together in sweet harmony. So I'm going to see if we can do two-part harmony there. So the first one is going to be instead of that melody, sing together in sweet harmony. It's going to be sing together in sweet harmony. So um, let me play you that bit on its own for a second. Yeah. Melody. Sing together in sweet harmony. So everyone's singing, sing together in sweet harmony. They're going up there. I want you to go, sing together in sweet harmony. Okay? Yeah? So I'm going to record that. Okay, here we go. That's when all our voices sing together in sweet harmony. Very good. A diagnosis of dementia can be difficult and life-changing, and the challenges of memory loss can be very frustrating. But a loving and supportive community can go a long way to helping us all live our best lives. In Toronto, Canada, an Academy for Arts and Intergenerational Learning is on the cutting edge of a new philosophy of relational caring that prioritizes compassionate, mutual relationships for nurturing a sense of belonging and purpose. Here at the Academy, everyone is considered a teacher and a learner. Rigid schedules and tests are thrown out the window to make room for discovery and life and professionals in the fields of visual arts, music, and dance use the arts as a medium for creating deep connections and supporting engagement and life enrichment. And in the time they've been creating community here, the team behind this one-of-a-kind academy have discovered that not only is music a wonderful way to enrich one's life, for many of the people here, academy members and artists alike, music is life. One, two, three, four. Right, good. Okay, so let me just set it up to record. That's going to sound wicked. Two, three, four. Today, Grammy Award winning musician and songwriter Simon Law is recording his latest song. His musicians and co-writers are the members of the Dota Bitov Wellness Academy. The Dota Bitov is a place that uses art as a medium to develop authentic relationships. And what that means in practice is that we are all interested in being able to find points of connection through creative mediums. The Dota Bitov Wellness Academy is unique because of our philosophy and our structure, and that we are a, an academy of teaching and learning. And we're focused on relationships and engagement and life enrichment. We believe that a person is a person, not a person is a patient. A person that you respect, a person that you can share laugh and tears and joys and sadness and emotion, that is the belief and the philosophy that we have. I could dance to that. Could you, could you, could you groove to that? That feels good to me. Hey? <laughs> Although their unique relational caring philosophy encompasses all the arts, music is everywhere at the Academy. From music-filled mornings, to ukulele groups and sing-alongs, to special performances, to the almost daily dance parties. Music plays a role in everything we do here. From the moment that people come in, we call it playing the DJ, where we put music on as soon as people get here to feel out, like, to create a mood or an environment for people to come and enjoy, like, conversations with coffee and crossword puzzles. And then it trickles into the ballroom, as we call it, because there's always dancing, always singing along, and and, um, and dance, yeah, dance is a big part of our community. And if it's dancing you want, then Academy member Robert is the man you need to see. Music, to me, is like a new eaten a nice piece of cake or something. It just comes to me and I just love it. Oh. 
Once the music starts and you get up and you start to move and it just moves you and you may not get all the words but you can remove it and the thing there with music for me is to understand what's going on, enjoy it and don't go and spoil up the party. <laughs> how music moves him, it's, it's very physical, it's this beautiful kind of uh, how it speaks to the feet, you know, and he is, he is a guy who totally embodies that. Robert, well, Robert is my dance partner, and I absolutely adore dancing with him because he's one of the participants that actually expresses um, the rhythm of the music in his soul. To me, music is the greatest equalizer. If you put people together, whatever language they speak or don't speak, and you play the right music, we all get together, we dance, we pat each other on the back, you know, and we exhort ourselves, really get excited about music. And music is really fit to be loved by everybody. People who don't love music or haven't had the opportunity of getting there, they have missed a lot because music lightens the load. He's really curious about people and he really takes the time to know people. And I know the folks, I don't know all names, I don't, not good at remembering names, but I know all the name, all the faces and I can say, hi, how are you doing today? I'm one of those fellows if I came and sat by your chair and a few minutes pass and nothing happens, then I try to, tap, to open up a conversation or at least to show somebody that I know you're there and I know we are here. And Robert's not alone in this thinking. Music at the Academy is the glue that holds everything together. I think what our work here at the Academy does through the arts, and specifically music, is transformative. We have seen people come in shy, um, hesitant, and come and regain their sense of self. And certainly, as rewarding as I've seen it be for participants, it's equally rewarding for the people that work here. What we give, we get. Um, it's definitely a, a, a two-way flow of, I would say, magic. <laughs> there's no question there's therapeutic value to it. It's not a formal therapy program here. It's relational caring. Um, so we are people relating to people, using the arts to build a bridge and create relationships that are meaningful, respectful, dignified, loving. I don't know where I'd be without music, really. As, I, as I've got older, I feel tremendously grateful to be able to make music. I love performing, I love singing and whatever, but the actual creation of music is, is, is just this incredible joy to me, and I get, it gets, gets, gets better <laughs> as I get older. So, uh, you know, maybe less people listening now, <laughs> but it doesn't matter, I, I just love creating music, and, and the opportunity here, here at Bitov to create music is, 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 is amazing. I, I just love that, and I'm so glad that I'm able to actually create original music here. That's really special. That's the waveform of what you played. And, um, that's, and us. that's you. That's you playing the drums and percussion there. So let me just play it to you. Simon has been creating and recording a song with the members of the Academy. See the line going across? Simon does many different things here, as you can see. And one of the most important things that I think that he does for us is he helps us compose songs. Come on, you can move to that. I invited him to create a song for our yeah. music research on group, musical right? engagement yeah. and the meaning of music in our lives. You know, as soon as I heard that, I thought, wow, that's so, that's so fertile, such fertile ground. Because, you know, I, I see all the time how, how important this is to folks here. But what we, we're going to write a song about this, you know, we're going to write a song about music itself. I first and foremost, I had these lovely sort of brainstormy sessions where I just asked everyone to, to what, what does music really mean to you? How does it, how do you relate to it? What does it, how does it speak to you? And all these wonderful things came up and I just made several big charts of all these lovely phrases, you know. And the ones that really sort of covered everything made it into the song. And I'm, I'm so proud of how it's, it it's really is a, a beautiful piece of collaborative art, you know.
While music in many other spaces is used as a tool or clinical intervention, at the Dotsa Bitov Wellness Academy, music is so much more. Our intention here is to create a space where relationships are in the fore, where they're most important. And so music we're seeing is an incredible medium for creating a space for those relationships. When we use music in a non-clinical setting, or we use music to create relationship, it speaks to our inherent connection to music as human beings. Our pulse is our internal metronome. Our breathing is rhythmic. The way our voice sounds is melodic. This makes music in many different contexts the perfect ingredient to create relationship-based learning, wellness, engagement. It's a really lovely way to bring people together in a shared space. And it doesn't necessarily have to have a clinical goal. When you're in a more diverse and community-oriented setting where there is mutual learning taking place, music brings people together in a whole different way that's a little more broad and a little more far-reaching. If this was a music therapy setting, there might be a goal such as anxiety reduction or pain management. But when you're in a group setting and people are listening to music together and sharing and laughing and engaging, it speaks to the power of music to um, address our humanness and bring us together. Academy member Sheru knows the power of music. Music is my whole world. Oh my God. Music is something that you get joy out of it, makes you happy, and, and takes the sad part away. <laughs> she feels music deeply, I know that. And if I catch her eye or she catches my eye, we, are, we always exchange a little smile. She's such a joyful person. Um, she just loves being here. She loves sharing her life experiences with everyone. Um, she loves the music and um, she's just a joy to be with. I would say to the people and to the world, music is something that inspires you and you're doing it from your inner soul. I, I, I sing songs in, in, in my, my kitchen <laughs> when, I'm, <laughs> when I'm cooking. <laughs> I, I, will, I will just sing it to you quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Music is, um, makes me feel good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's another morning of coffee and crosswords at the Academy, and the conversation has turned to the importance of music. Joy, oh. happiness. That's when I get happy. And here, everyone's encouraged to get up and dance. Yes. And most people do. I just like being rhythmical. Well, since I started here, my kids actually believe that it dance better. <gasps> really? Yeah. And I, and I, and oh, I, said, I love that. And you, got, you people have been my critiques <laughs> by, by saying, oh, you're such a good dancer, Dad. And I said, I don't think anything's changed for me. <laughs> <laughs> Music is how, a way of bringing back memories for me. Yes. That's true. Some I don't want to remember. Yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> but they come anyway. Could they be. come anyway. Everything comes with conditions. They, yeah, they creep up yeah. on you again. Oh, Music oh, is a way of telling me it's time to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> I don't know when I go home, I go to lie down. Yeah, where, where's my pillow? Oh, where's my pillow? <laughs> Robert? Hmm? If you had to fill in the blank, music is. Soul connection. I was born in Grenada and grew and developed and lived in Grenada. 
I had a good part of my livelihood in Jamaica, where I met Hazel, my wife. And um, I've been living here in Canada for, I would I, over, say, say over 10 years. And uh, mm. how many? 51. What? Sorry, 51 years. Time flies when you're having fun. Retired physician and surgeon Robert lives with his wife of nearly 55 years, Hazel. Actually, we met on a university trip to Cuba, and this was in 1960. I got to know her because by some accident, her flip-flop was mashed, and she tripped. And I don't know this guy was there. She turned around, and it happened to be me. Mm -hmm. And I've been getting flip-flops from then, and I love them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really like the whistle. I like to hum, and I like to sing. That came from my mother. She was always humming and whistling and doing a little dip ditty in the kitchen, and um, that sort of grew on me. We still keep my, my music going, whatever, whatever I call singing. I do it here at Hazel in the, on the, at the keyboard, and for that I'm very grateful. I want to do it for years and years and years still. He sings in the church choir, so I, every afternoon I usually have to work with him on the anthem that's coming up for that Sunday so that he can know it really well. And I like it when I can sing. When yeah. I, when I know the pieces and my throat's comfortable, I really enjoy that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the church organist, Rachel, said recently, she said, you know, Robert has a nice voice, but he only sings out when he knows the thing well. So in Common other words, sense. if he doesn't know it well, he keeps really soft. Oh, my son, he's a darling, I'm telling you. <laughs> he's here, I know. <laughs> Sheru lives with and is cared for by her son, Kareem. She was always, always very caring. Uh, if you can tell from my size, food was a big part of <laughs> life. Uh, she loved to bake, and so we see a lot of... Uh, a lot of goodies and I was somewhat overprotective of her sometimes uh, and probably still am to some degree. He was a sweet, sweet little baby <laughs> and uh, he grew up with love and affection from his dad when his dad was alive at that time. I married his, uh, his father but uh, unfortunately, he died of a very young, at a very young age. And um, that makes me a little sad also, because he was the love of my life. And the children, I, 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 I overcome that when I had my kids and everyone, you know. I was 15. Um, he passed away the day after my birthday. It was, it was not an easy task whatsoever, but um, I made it work. For my mom, she went from being essentially, like I said, a housewife, although she did have a job, uh, to becoming the sole breadwinner. Um, and for me, from a cultural context, um, I uh, took on the role of uh, the man of the house, <coughs> yeah. but far too young to do that. Um, but it, uh, it stayed with me for a long time. So a significant impact. I was close to my dad. I used to skip a lot of school to be with him and hang out with him. Um, so that was tough. Yeah, it's tough. It took me a long time to, to get over that. Yeah. It's not easy, uh, quite honestly. It's, it's probably one of the toughest 
uh, things I've had to do and uh, one of the toughest things for me to learn to come to grips with. And so I've gone from sort of son and loving son kind of thing to being a provider and a caregiver. And I lose sight of the fact that um, I also need to be a son. The times when she's at the Bitov is when I feel the most comfort and relaxed because I know that she's probably having a good time. She feels part of the people there. They don't make you feel any different than anyone else. They treat very you friendly. With, very friendly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very loving environment. And uh, I, I'm so glad and so thankful that, uh, that we found this program, to be honest. With the recording nearly complete, Simon is back in the studio mixing the song. Yeah, so when we were starting to think about the song, we had this idea of the... Uh, meaning of music and what is the meaning of music in our lives and um, a lot of people were saying you know music lifts me up the music it, take, it takes me higher it makes me feel better and so that was the kind of lead off idea that music takes you higher and um, and so I, I had some chords that I was messing around with at home that had that sounded something probably like this Of uh, things that are the kind of chords that I mess around with at home, and um, and then I so I, I sort of thought about this music takes you higher, music opens up your mind. Uh, that was the other another thing how it sort of opened up, op opened up your experience, opened up your mind. So th those that was the first two lines. So I I went home I remember and I just started thinking about a melody something like this. Music takes you higher. Music opens up your mind. And I remember the next time I, I went in, someone said, I think it doesn't just open up your, your music doesn't just open your mind, it's your heart, it's to do with your heart as well. It speaks to our hearts. So I changed that line and it, and it ended up being something like, Music takes you higher, music opens your heart and mind. It, it was a long, it was a long, just a long creative process. I didn't sort of hurry this in any way. I started bringing in my computer and my recording uh, equipment, and we recorded all the singing. Is is everyone for the bit of singing together? Um, there is percussion in there. Uh, some folks have learned to play ukulele. I've got ukuleles in there. It, it's like everyone bring bring their talents. You know, it was a sort of real kitchen sink approach what have we got right like uh, and then my mind just goes crazy with figuring out how we can get we we'll use all these elements and I love that process you know really do someone said the other day you know they really own the song it's uh, it's owned by everyone you know and um so yeah this sort of collaborate co writing a song with a big group is not something i do in my normal <laughs> work it's usually one or two people but it's a thrill to do i i really love it but even before his time at the academy simon had first-hand experience of the power of music for people living with memory loss now, i have a personal journey with alzheimer's because my father was diagnosed with it at the age of 67 I think it was so quite early so that whole period that lasted through till he, he till he died earlier this year at 80 age of 83 you know, it was a very long journey you know and um and so I was always interested in in dementia but also I knew how how music uh, spoke to my dad recently the Academy has expanded to double their size this newfound space allows an opportunity for more members and larger activities. Today they are celebrating the opening with a special performance by a world-renowned cellist from the Glenn Gould School of Music. Using music uh, to make a connection with people or to move people in some sense is basically the goal. And that's what I love to do more than anything, actually. 
And we have our performer here, Richard, who is going to be performing um, with his beautiful cello. So we welcome both of them greatly to our day of performance at the Bintov Academy. And this is our first performance since we've opened our brand new space. So it's a celebration as well. If you meet young musicians, the main thing that they want is exactly what this is, a room full of listeners. So this is our perfect environment. At any time, if when I was with my dad, if I put on particularly uh, Bach's music, spoke to him profoundly. The arts, and again, specifically music, is a language unto itself. It is timeless, really, and I, it feels like music, where it lives in our minds, is different than some of the other uh, functions and everyday activities that we do. And it lives there forever, and it's part, it defines who we are. It's, it's connected to our heart and soul. It feels like that's what I've witnessed. I remember one time lying, having a nap with him, lying down in the afternoon, and we just, we often would have um, music on all the time, actually, just classic FM or whatever it was. This is in England, but um, a piece of beautiful piece of Bach's piano music came on, I, I don't know which one particularly, but, and Dad was listening to it, and, and he just sighed, one of his sighs of just delight, you know, and then, and then he said to me, it sounds just like, just like a, a stream, just like water, and Bach's music kind of tumbles over itself and goes on and on and on, doesn't really, you're never quite sure when it's going to finish, you know, because you think it's coming to an end and then, oh, it, off it goes again, and it's like a little brook, you know, babbling away. And it was um, a very beautiful moment of how it really spoke to him, you know, and uh, I remember that very clearly, that little moment. The experience of engaging in music can be nonverbal if people can listen to music together and not feel that they have to retrieve any kind of information through language. That can be an inviting and inclusive way of connecting with another human being. But further to that, if someone can access a memory through music, that can be a very rewarding experience and a very comforting experience, not only for the person themselves, but for the people around them. Dr. Al Power is an internationally recognized expert on transformational models of care for older adults living with changing cognitive abilities. One of the biggest barriers to well-being for people living with dementia is the sense of stigma that is created around the illness. Uh, stigma is huge. I don't think you can overestimate it in the world of dementia. Um, and a lot of it comes from the way we have medicalized the condition. Um, not that it's not a medical condition, but we focus so intently on disease, on what is missing, that we only see the person from that very narrow lens of disease, disability, decline. And so it makes us uh, do a lot of things that are very limiting to the person. We underestimate their capabilities. We shut them out or take decisions away from them early on. We tend to shun people because it makes us uncomfortable, or we assume that they can't engage in certain things. We tend to blame their distress on the brain disease instead of looking at the larger context to see if uh, it could be something that would bother any of us in the same situation. And we tend to rush to medications when there are many other non-medical solutions that can help people to live better. I think I, I feel like there's, there's sort of key people in this place that are sort of, that 
embody the sort of uh, energy and the vibe, and Alan's certainly one of those guys, yeah. Music is a message sent to the brain to enjoy uh, happiness. Well, I like I, I like to paint. I like to do some artwork. Uh, I like music. I like to listen to music. I play harmonica, and I try to play a guitar. I haven't uh, played it thoroughly, but I'm working on it. Alan? Oh, Alan. He's so lovely. <laughs> what shall we call him? We'll call him the surprising chef. Cook the schnook. Cook or cook the schnook. <laughs> Alan is a big teddy bear, but a stand-up comedy teddy bear. He is so funny. Um, he he is also so so sweet. I uh, go to the Bitol Center and, uh, and I enjoy the uh, the arts program there because I'm an artsy person. So I enjoy that it, that uh, period of time during the day. And I go four days a week, so it uh, keeps me busy and it uh, keeps my wife out of trouble. <laughs> Alan lives with his wife, Myrna. I met Al first when he was 20 and I was 15, and his first love was my girlfriend. <laughs> so we used to go to, he'd be at the same parties as me, and when they broke up, I had to hear his tearful story. And then we met again when we both worked at Yorkdale. I was in high school at the time. And then I didn't see him forever. <laughs> I went to a singles barbecue, which I've never in my life done because I wanted to introduce a friend of mine who was a widow to another friend who was a widow. And there was a crowd of people around something and the something was Al. <laughs> And when he saw me, he came over, he was all excited, and we left and went dancing. And that's how we met, again. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this is the day that Al and I got married, and it was 30 years ago. And it's always so nice to look back because we were so young and vital and active at that time. Both of us was lovely. You have to respect each other's space. I think that's the most important thing. You have to have a sense of humor. And you have to stop trying to make somebody what they're not. You accept them for who they are. And that's the secret of a good marriage. And we use good glue. <laughs> I think when you live with different forms of dementia, when you live with memory loss, there are still some very important reasons why music is so engaging and so powerful. So the great thing about music with dementia is that there are many broken connections with dementia, but there are just millions and billions of connections in there that are not damaged. But if you engage with music, all of a sudden those connections are still very powerful and they open doors to memories, to speech, to engagement in ways that you are unable to do with more traditional uh, interactions. While his memory may not be what it used to be, Alan's years of working as a designer have translated to a home filled with his beautiful paintings. I was trained as a draftman. I worked in an engineering office in the uh, industrial field and became a designer. Like de I would design things right at that time, like uh, control panels and instruments that worked on the, uh, in the equipment. I make a point of taking Al out as much as possible because being with other people is very, very helpful for him and changing the view is very important. We go to so many concerts. I like classical, I love classical. I can't say Al loves classical, but he will go with me. I don't like it, I just listen to it. <laughs> and we both love Latin music and you know, it's just very much a part of our lives, the arts. I like pop music, but I like jazz, Dixieland jazz. Uh, basically, that, uh, that's basically what I like. He learned the guitar on his own, and like many things he does, he learned it and he put it away, and it was in the storage. And then he started the Beethoven, and the first day, literally, he came home and said, where's my guitar? He said, it's in the storage. 
I want to get it down, I want to get it restrung, and it's been in the apartment ever since, and he plucks at it. And I, I think it's amazing. I love it. But he just keeps us so much a part of it. It's who he is, the music, the dancing, the art, it's him. He's an artsy, and he's happy there. He really is happy. That, that, yeah. Didn't play anything special, just a strumming ray. <laughs> a new addition to Sheru's home has her beaming. I've been happy with her having the children and my daughter-in-law, and we're having a, a, a wonderful time. And the little one here, he is so amazing. And Nikhil also. And Nikhil's a little shy. Yeah, he's a bit shy. Look, he's wide so, away. So this is Zachary, and this is Zachary? Nikhil. And this is my wife, Shafreen. She's got my back. <laughs> <laughs> she actually does. She always does. It's an amazing experience to to be able to have to be blessed with being able to have a family. Um, and I was worried she might never get a chance to see them. And I always remind Kareem how lucky he is that his mom lives with us. Right? That it's nice to have your parent live with you. The idea of engaging with a person living with memory loss as just another person as an equal, is not as common as one might think. The Dotsa Bitov Wellness Academy is at the leading edge of culture change within dementia care that focuses more on relationships than diagnoses. The Academy is unique in that our focus is about relationships and engagement. Um, I find other places the focus is more about someone's cognitive ability. How do we fix that? How do we make them better? Versus accepting a person for who and how they are and that let's just be in relationship with that. We see the person for who they are and in the moment that they come into our space. And because we do that with one another as well as the academy members, their family members, um, the transportation drivers that come in, they have a really hard job. So it's it really truly is creating a community that is a family. It, it, it becomes a second home. Back home, Rhodes Scholar Robert is in a reflective mood. Oh, I could get a little extra sleep in the morning and so forth. But I miss my patients. I had a good time being a practicing physician. It was really, really a calling that I enjoyed. And sometimes I wish I could do it again. But that's rather silly of me then past that stage. The fact that Robert can no longer work, provide for his family, have really taken a toll on him emotionally. My difficulty is, not, is some difficulty, is not a total difficulty. The only thing I, that really, really, really bothers me and gets to me is that I can't drive anymore. And I'm lost. I've, I, I've missed my friends, my patients. That's a big, that's a big hole in my life. Not being, not being able to, to drive puts a lot of stress on his life. My health, all and all, people who don't know my condition would think I'm a great normal guy because I try to live normally, but. Those are the two things that I'm that really I'm unhappy about. My brain seems to, for me to be normal, but the medical people have made the diagnosis. The treatment is quite easy for me at this point, and I'm doing the best. We go to sing, we dance, we, we love each other, hug each other, eat. I still do the cooking there, Hazel. Yeah. I do the cooking, and my children don't react Strange, nobody will react strange to me. All I want is my life to be like it is now. And if I could just get to, if I could only drive again, you know, if I could only, but that's done, I think, unfortunately. So I have to settle. And Hazel reminded me, 
settle on, tells me the good things that I have still. After months of writing and recording, the song is finally finished, and Simon is here to play it for the Academy members for the very first time. I was just in England for a couple of weeks working there on a project, and I, you know, so I wasn't coming here. And I find I miss the place, actually, and it's so lovely to come back and see everyone again. This is the finished version. So I'd love you to just listen to it. If you want to just listen and maybe not sing along, that's fine, but if you want to sing along too, that would be, that would be perfect. Um, yeah, let's have a listen. The rewards are to see the very heart of what music means. To, you know, we're, it's an important thing for most of us, you know, whichever way we experience music in our lives. But, you know, the, this is the fundamental, shows the fundamental power of music to transform a human being, you know. And to see that day in, day out is, is, a, is a privilege and, a, and an honor, you know. And to be part of creating music that does that, that's, the, that's a beautiful joy of mine. I mean, I'm a, I love to create music. That's the, the biggest thrill for me. And to create this song that we've been working on, and now it's sort of developed into this quite, this beautiful big sort of orchid, you know? And it's, um, it's, it's just glorious, you know? I think now I see more here. I see more how music really touches and moves people and the profound nature of that than I, 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 I've ever seen anywhere else. And, you know, I've seen thousands of people dancing to a song that I've written or whatever, and that's an amazing feeling, don't get me wrong. I love all that. But it, it's sort of this sort of thing where you just... Um, you see how it touches people, you know. too is if music is life what are we doing to support life then everywhere you know? so we want to with this research we want to provoke others to consider that you know we don't yes we've come to a new understanding and one of the exciting things that we're seeing with this structure and philosophy um, music emerges as life and so if music is, is life, then how can we support it everywhere as opposed to only being used as a tool or as therapy? Music is the only way we repeat emotion. That's a beautiful mini sign. Music lifts up my spirit. Here we go. Music lifts my
I think if, if anyone kind of visited this, this place, you'd see that music is fundamental to the way the bit of works and what we do here. Um, even if it's not a particularly music-based um, program that's being offered, it's, there'll be music involved in some way. And um, I just think it's, it's a wonderful uh, art form for bringing people together. I don't know if there's any better, really. It just sort of, it, it, it brings people together, you know, and it just, it, whether you're singing together, whether you're just simply listening together, whether you're creating it together, whether you're playing some music together, you're dancing together, it's, it's this sort of binding, beautiful, Thing that, that that brings you in, you know. It was a, a beautiful, a beautiful moment. Um, a lo lot of, uh, a lot of great sort of memories and experiences putting the thing together, and um, to share it now with everybody. And uh, you know, it's it's especially poignant because there's a few folks who are no longer with us that are, have have sung on the tune or sp even have spoken in the middle section. So. Um, it's a, it's a, I'm very proud of it, and I think it really speaks volumes about our work here, you know, and the, the community that we have here. When I, when I share it with the folks, I can see how much they are um, part of it, how much they feel ownership of it, and um, that's a really lovely thing to be part of. I am not afraid of being old now. I love being with these people. I love being with with people who are, you know, um, having this experience, and um, I want to walk with them. That's just what I want to do until until the end of life. I think I, I think it's taught me immensely about um, being able to live in the present moment. I think that's something which you know, dementia can teach us all, actually. You know, it's a, a really profound thing that if you spend time with someone be, with dementia, that's the only place you can really be. And it's, um, and it's a good place to be, you know. And when you hear the music, how do you want to move? Sexy. <laughs> when we're all together here in this room and we're singing and we're dancing, what's that like for you? For me? I feel I'm in heaven, <laughs> and I feel happy. It takes the sadness away, truly speaking. So Alan, if, if there were no music in the world, what would that be like for you? I'd hum. Maybe when the birds sing, the bird makes beautiful. The birds make nice music. You hear that? This is all wrong. Music is all wrong, and somehow or another, some people find a way to make music. 
Well, if you not, uh, if you don't know how to sing and all that, you're losing out, baby. <laughs> you're losing out. 